they're really good use cases for like, you know, utilizing and token gating or like availing discounts or availing different kinds of perks and benefits. So I think NFTs itself are like the status thing sometimes, or they're like, right. loyal, they're like signaling loyalty or they're you usually like have the utility of like unlocking some perks or discounts. Hello and welcome to Proof of Talk, the cryptocurrency podcast where we invite leaders and builders into the space to come on and talk about their experience in the industry as well as the projects and products that they've been building. My name is Andre and I've been in the cryptocurrency space since 2017. I've also helped co-found algorithmic crypto trading platform Acer that enables users to quickly and easily automate their trades while managing the risk. I'm here today with Janil who is the co-founder of Coinvice. Lovely to have you man, how are you doing? I'm doing fantastic. Thanks for having me. Uh, have you seen the Sora AI videos? Yeah, I, I just saw they they look incredible. Uh, They're just nuts. I, I think like if you look at like the uh, previous like the Will Smith video. Uh, yeah. It, it, it has gotten so much better. Yeah, you look at him eating that pasta back in 2023 yeah. and he's just like a amalgamation of like this kind of deep dreaming that Google used to do back yeah. in the day. You had some footage of that and you look at fo the footage today and it's absolutely wild. Like that's just yeah. nuts how much that technology has evolved in one year. I just wonder where, where it's going to go in terms of like entertainment and stuff. Like are we going to see it in films or video games or VR or stuff like that? Yeah, it's going to be a very interesting time. Like now that content is going to be generated. So like, you know, convince in such a convincing way. And it's going to create like in the next two to five years, create this like entire market of like creators that are going to, you know, like monetize in unique ways, create content in unique ways. And it's you can't distinguish whether it's real or AI generated. So. Oh, yeah. yeah. And I think it's also going to change the way we approach um, uh, peripherals or like graphics cards and processors right now, because yeah. it seems like we're going to have AI in everything. And it, it seems that we're going to need to have some kind of different architecture. Like Apple's yep. already kind of doing that with their silicones. They have neural, neural chips as well on their GPUs, their solar yeah. don't CPUs as well, it seems like we're going to be moving in that direction because if we're talking about generated AI generated content, the next step, I guess, would just be real time generation of, of video content so that you could play a kind of like a procedurally generated game with, with graphics that are just AI generated in real time, I don't know, based on prompts or based on things you imagine or it's just a wild time. I've been reading about this all day. I saw some of the videos and I'm just really excited and like mind blown about how good this is and how good it's going to get one year from now. Yeah, uh, I am like really excited to see like intersection and growth of like Apple Vision Pro and Sora and like oh, this man. year is started <laughs> off like really strong. Oh, yeah. But if you have VR and then Sora or some kind of other advanced AI video generating model, and yeah. then you have neural inputs, like uh, yeah. you're not even going to leave your house. You're just going to live in your own little like custom made reality with yeah. sensory inputs and stuff. It's just, it's crazy that we're, it's 2024. We're talking about this. It's just nuts. <laughs> I feel like our attention was the first thing that the internet started like, you know, capitalizing on. And now it's, expanded into not just attention it's like your senses in every possible way and it's like watching an infinite tiktok video on yeah vr and it's gonna be pretty interesting oh yeah no it's gonna be wild um yeah. and it's it's an all year like all round really strong year for tech in general yeah like cryptocurrencies being just silently bullish um like bitcoin broke $52,000 and people when when this happened the first time around for like the previous bull market people were already like nuts over bitcoin at this price point right now it seems to be business as usual you don't see yeah. the hype in the media you don't see any kind of the the crazy hype that used to be in the previous bull run which i think it's a good thing because it means that it's a more more kind of sustainable 
approach to this. Like it's not just being hyped the shit out of so that, you know, people go in and buy high and then eventually, you know, we end up in another bear market. It seems that because it's a silent accumulation, because it's silently bullish, it, it has more cons- more time to consolidate at that price without the hype. I agree with that. I mean, there is like a lot of hype right now moving towards like Parcaster and yeah. different like networks and DGENs have sort of moved there. There's yeah. also like people still like uh, working with meme tokens and really getting excited about that. I've seen a lot of those happening as well. Like that hasn't stopped. NFT volumes have generally statistically gone quite a bit up. Uh, so we're seeing right. like early signs of that. Uh, I think it's still going to be interesting because uh, I do think like people have matured from like the last bear market, but still I think that excitement is is like only rising. So we haven't seen like uh, I, I guess like the full like unlock yet. We're seeing signs of that in like different use cases like Farcaster, but I'm excited right. to see like where what other areas we see that again. Uh, and yeah, that's going to be interesting. <laughs> Are you on Farcaster? I am on Farcaster. I'm at Geno, and we are uh, we're working on launching an integration there. But yeah, generally speaking, we've seen a lot of interest in that uh, in that ecosystem right now. Yeah, well, I've it popped up on my radar a couple of weeks ago. Farcaster as yeah. well. Um, so I I did join and I've been active ever since, which is pretty cool. So I've just yeah at Geno. I'm gonna give you a follow because. Uh, Thank you. I'm going to try and be active on there. I'm going to try and also kind of understand, like Farcaster for me is so different from any kind of social media. It has these like embeds of, you could literally mint stuff or interact with other applications straight from Farcaster. I've seen people put in like email subscribe links for newsletter and stuff in like Farcaster frames. It's it's such a cool kind of innovative, I feel, uh, social media. Like it's made for Web3. It is, it definitely is. I mean, People have like been using it for, um, it, it's like really concentrated crypto group. It's like a water cooler discussion where like it's <laughs> all like three people. And I think it is good because then you can have like a filtered uh, opinion and network of people rather than on Twitter. It's a bunch of everything. And mm-hmm. uh, I think just as a distribution standpoint, that's a really smart way to be active there. So maybe maybe this sounds stupid because I haven't actually done a lot of research on Farcaster, but are messages do 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 messages live on chain? Is that what happens? Like every post, does that actually live on chain? Because I know you have clients for them. You have like Warpcast, which is a client for Farcaster, but does the Farcaster data live on chain directly? I think like they store the proof of the data on chain. Right. Um, and i'm not sure about messages but but yeah posts are the proof stay and they've abstracted away a lot of the ux around it so you really don't know you're using it just like a regular social network like a client so uh yeah but but it does because you can like use their apis to fetch that data and retrieve that from open subgraph so yeah uh, it does like store the proof that's wild that's pretty cool so you said you're working at Coinvice, you're working on an integration with uh, with Farcaster? Yeah, we're working on uh, launching a frame for Coinvice on Farcaster oh, that's cool. next. So that's hopefully we can announce that next week. And we're also working on one more at our integration with them. So at least nice. uh, that, that's how we're going to start, but we're going to do a lot of things there. Nice. So, well, when you say next week, that would have pro- most likely already happened um, because this is going to air after uh, after next week. So for anyone listening, that's probably already live and you should go check it out. Yeah. Um, do you want to maybe give a little bit of an introduction of how you got into crypto uh, in, in the first place? Yeah, I got into crypto back in 2016. I was a sophomore in college. I studied computer software engineering. And I uh, did a job as a research assistant on campus uh, with one of my professors. And we ended up uh, working on researching uh, the Byzantine fault tolerance algorithm, uh, data management for IoT devices and mining pool security. All three of those papers got published um, in IEEE journals. uh, It's live online. You can look it up. And 
after graduating, I obviously spent three years during college on research. So I had some uh, experience in understanding what crypto was like. So I started working as a, uh, as a software engineer at Zero Chain. I helped them build an integration with Ethereum. And I also worked on a bunch of side projects and hackathons during that time. So I got a bit of like experience hacking myself. And then later we realized that there's sort of like a market need and, and uh, a sort of evolution where we started seeing communities and creators started forming. And uh, then we started CoinWise right about at the end of 2021, uh, uh, 2020. So that was like uh, the trajectory before I started CoinWise. Um, obviously there's a lot more that happened in between, but right. uh, that, that's sort of how I, I got here. Right. So you were just researching algorithms and and similar technologies in, in college and you've published your papers uh, on the Byzantine fault tolerance algorithm. I think that is super relevant for crypto. I think it's being used in a lot of chains for governance and stuff. Um, yeah. what, ex- what exactly did you kind of research around the Byzantine fault tolerance? Yeah, so we ended up publishing a threshold base um, uh, mechanism where we altered the algorithm and added a threshold so that it can prevent any DDoS attacks. And right. we uh, ended up building a thesis around it and published that paper. And um, yeah, it, it, we ended up publishing and uh, explaining it at CES, I think 2020 or 2021 uh, in Las Vegas. And, and that was pretty cool. So That's cool. Yeah. Is that being used anywhere now? Is it is the code on GitHub or anything? The code is on GitHub. The paper is online. You, uh, you can find it online, but uh, it's not being used anywhere. It was just like a great, like fun thing to do in college. And, and uh, yeah, that, that's about it. <laughs> that's cool, man. That's cool. Yeah. Um, so then obviously you got into CoinVice around, you said, founded that in 2020, 2021. Um, yeah. So tell me a little bit about CoinWise. Yeah, so CoinWise started out as a platform where uh, creators, communities, and platforms can uh, create and distribute rewards for, uh, uh, you know, uh, making any on-chain or off-chain contributions. So we started off with a tool called Airdrop, which was really popular mm-hmm. uh, for platforms to do uh, to their most active users. And I wanted to launch it as a tool so that other people can use it without having the need to code. And I think like what was interesting was um, we saw like communities and DAOs starting using more airdrops more frequently. We also started seeing platforms using these kinds of tooling to acquire and engage their existing users with their token, or they even started using NFTs as a reward for like engagement purposes. We also saw co-ops and different use cases like that. So we built a no-code tool where you can deploy a claim page uh, where you can reward tokens, NFTs, or any kind of uh, currency for that matter, ETH, MATIC, OP, Arbitrum, and uh, for completing any on-chain action. So for creators, that was social actions like following on Forecaster, following on Twitter, following... Uh, subscribing to your YouTube channel, following on, you know, submitting an email address, uh, subscribing on Mirror. Uh, We published like um, a series of actions that they can use to uh, have people engage with them. And for engaging, they get a reward. And And that's all on the claim page. That's all on the claim page. And it's all free to use for creators. Uh, We did this. Yeah, we did this for platforms as well. So you can uh, use any custom action. So for example, if they're a bridge or a swap company, DeFi company, they can have a bridge or a swap requirement where you have to bridge at least $50 to certain chain using their app. So you can build any custom requirements too. And uh, we've built similar claim pages for ecosystems like Polygon. And we've also built this for brands like Coindesk and The Block. So a lot of interesting use cases came out of it. And now we're live on all major networks and we're used as a growth tool for, uh, you know, getting more people to uh, join and engage and retain for your uh, brand. So, uh, yeah, uh, it's been it's been incredible. It was about live for about three years now. Yeah. That sounds, that sounds like a pretty kick-ass tool. So. Yeah. 
how do you ch how do you check the like the social proof that someone's done something on chain? I'm guessing you're you you would have to associate their Twitter profile with their wallet address. So we can automatically check via their API already, um, and uh, yeah, it's as simple as that. So we can check it internally whether they've followed you or not, and same thing for other actions as well. So we I think we support uh, Twitter, Lens, Farcaster um other apps we also support like submitting an email because a lot of people want to build an email yeah. list so yeah. um we support that uh yeah there's a there's a bunch of other like requirements you can even like incentivize them to collect nfts on different platforms um yeah we, we've built a bunch of interesting things there that's pretty neat i i love the the kind of integration with the social aspect of it um because yeah. it builds this kind of the, the this trustless system you trust that you know the person's actually doing what they're saying they're doing hey i've retweeted i've commented i've subscribed to your email address or whatever your email list then also puts the responsibility on the person running this to actually deliver um it's not you know i have seen on on twitter like i'm not gonna call out names or anything but i've seen people promoting giveaways but then they never give anything away yeah, it's uh, this is like a, a foolproof way of like, you know, deploying a reward page or a claim page where people can claim any kind of a reward. If you don't have a token or anything, you can even do an NFT or a badge. And that's the best way to engage your users and build loyalty with your community and uh, engage them. So I think that's really important now because uh, having a good distribution and having a very active user base, active community is really important these days, and especially in Web3. So we built this out and a lot of people are really liking it. Yeah, yeah. Um, so thinking about the kind of features that you offer, are those um, available through the visual interface or yeah, is there any... Yeah, it's completely no code. You don't need to know how to code. You can use our website by just connecting your wallet and get started almost immediately you can go live and within minutes <laughs> that's fantastic so yeah. the claim page then um, do i need a subdomain do i need to you don't like... need a subdomain you can just do it on our website okay and it's going to be just uh, like coinvice or or my app dot coinvice or, or dot com yeah, or something it, it, it would be coinvice.co slash your username and slash uh, let's say already member badge or whatever campaign you launch. You can launch as many campaigns as you like. We're in fact going to launch protocol rewards, which is splitting the fees with the creators themselves. So incentivizing okay. creators of the campaigns to earn a share. So it's not just free to use. Now you can monetize for using CoinMice. That's neat. But if I wanted to have it on my own website, could I hook into with, uh, with an API or something and you use can. your guys' tech that way? Yeah. You absolutely can, yeah. That's sweet. Can what kind of uh, what kind of SDKs do you have, or what kind of API? What well, wait, yeah, what kind of SDKs do you support? Yeah, so we support like an iframe. So if you have a WordPress site or if you have any website, you can just copy and paste the iframe. So again, no need to code. You can embed it to your own website. Uh, if you want to code, you can. We have documentation and API for you, where you can integrate it. Uh, but the fastest way to is just directly embed it to your website. Um, uh, you can also like, you know, uh, launch it as like uh, on your like custom app. We've had like people do that as well. And uh, yeah, you can customize it in many, many different ways. So I just wanted to go back to airdrops. You mentioned this was like the first thing you guys started offering. Yeah. Um, Obviously, I'm guessing it's 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 airdrops for a big number of wallets. It's just bulk airdrop. That's yeah. kind of the feature behind it, right? And you can send one or multiple tokens. Is that right? Yeah, you can send like um, one token, multiple tokens to different people. And um, yeah, that was also like a similar use case uh, where uh, instead of like, you know, creating uh, this claim page, you can also send it to directly to wallet addresses. That's cool. Yeah. And it's all free and open uh, and open source. Yeah, um, it's all free. Um, it's all free to use. Campaigns is our hero product right now. And that's something like, uh, like I said, it's a growth tool. So that's something we're like promoting right now. Um, and 
uh, we're completely focusing on it. We've, we've we're actually now um, next week, hopefully launching protocol rewards. So really, really excited for that. And um, yeah, uh, we have a bunch of other things in the works as well. That sounds exciting, man. So yeah. how do you guys then um, make money? If it's all open, so we, we do have fees. We have platform fees. So whenever somebody comes to claim a reward, they, there's a um, 70, 80 cent fee, uh, depending on which network you're on. So it's pretty inexpensive. But yeah, we, we earn from uh, platform fees from the end uh, user when they come to claim a reward. Okay. So when they claim a reward, they claim the reward minus the fee. The market that you're yeah so if it's an nft uh they can claim the nft as the reward and they they have to pay like 80 90 cents platform fee um if if, and that's the same for tokens as well okay that's cool that that's i feel like that's a cool business model that works and uh it's transparent and i feel like it's uh it's a good way of doing it for sure yeah so and i saw that you guys have been endorsed by a few like quite big um crypto companies and you have a few pretty big ones working with you you mentioned coindesk you've built something for coindesk is that right yeah so we built uh these campaigns directly onto their website where they are dropped desk tokens to people that participated and uh they sort of helped us you know uh help use our entire tooling onto their own website uh they hosted consensus 2022 in austin texas where people Mm -hmm. visited the event in person scanned qr codes and uh, claimed desk tokens for purchasing things, visiting booths, different activities at the event. Uh, they also got rewarded for, you know, reading articles on their website and answering quizzes, doing daily check-ins. We built the whole system for them from scratch. Oh, wow. Yeah. That sounds pretty, really cool. It was pretty awesome. I mean, we got like over 30,000 people participate. It was, uh, it was crazy. Damn. So, scanning the qr codes is that something like a poll app would you basically get a poll yeah app? yeah essentially you can scan a qr code it'll lead you to the coinwise website the claim page and you would connect your wallet and claim the reward yeah that's cool so obviously that goes into memberships and token gating which are also features that i notice you support um what are some of the like benefits of using coinwise for me- for memberships or for token gating yeah, so you can use it for memberships by, like I said, you can give out membership passes to early supporters uh, if uh, just as a reward for free. And uh, uh, you can also say that if you join our community, you can get this membership badge. Uh, we do have the ability to, like, you know, for the community to monetize. So they can say that you can purchase a membership pass for, let's say, a few dollars or whatever you want to price it at. Uh, But the better strategy usually is when you can give out the membership passes for free where you ask them to do some kind of activity where they can support you and then they can claim the membership badge and and join your community. And I I think that model has worked really well. So, yeah, we do support memberships and we also have integrations with platforms where they offer memberships natively, for example, Orb, which is a client on Lens Protocol. Uh, mm-hmm. We have direct integration with them, so you can have a membership badge there as well. That's sweet. Yeah. And token gating, you can gate, obviously, gating access to certain parts of, of a website or a page or something yeah, like that. Yeah, you can token gate it directly, your community on Discord using Guild, or you can token okay. gate your websites with, with uh, you know, uh, in different ways. But once you distribute it, you can, like, you know, figure out ways to, like, token gate it on natively on apps. So we do have integrations with these apps where you can uh, use that reward and token get it. Uh, yeah. Right. That's super important, I feel, because it, you you get a lot of complexity around token gating. You get a lot of like, hey, this is a super powerful feature to have, um, but you don't have a lot of integration. So like, because you offer integration with Discord and with other apps, I feel that makes token gating, uh, like takes you to a different level. Yeah. Um, I was talking to this uh, guy that's developed uh, something called LoopPress, which okay. is a token gating system on uh, uh, on LoopRing, right? Okay. But specifically for WordPress websites. So you can token gate parts of the website, pages of the website, you know, using this free and open source plugin. Um, but it's just for it's just for WordPress. So it's great yeah. if you happen to use LoopRing and if you happen to be on WordPress. Um, but I feel, yeah, if you have something for a server, 
or something else, then that kind of expands the possibility of it, which is a good thing I haven't, I haven't actually thought about. I didn't even know you could token gate Discord servers, which is pretty neat. Yeah, you can. It's pretty easy and it's seamless. Like I can even uh, show you a demo on how it works. But yeah, usually like um, this uh, token gating has been around for a really long time and we figured it out or we've created ways where it's completely seamless uh, with CoinWise. Right. What else can you token gate? So you can token gate Google Forms. You can token gate Notion Docs. Uh, this is all offered through a tool called Guild um, that we're integrated with. So. Uh, they're a great way to token gate GitHub, um, Telegram, Discord. Um, you can token gate on Farcaster now. You can token gate on Lens Protocol, like I said, Orb. So a lot of the social networks where you can token gate networks itself or people, I think that's where token gating is the most useful. But you can also token gate like actual data or actual information like Google Docs. Uh, but we've seen like most people use token gating for either uh, memberships into like communities uh, on Discord, Telegram, and we've seen it uh, used as tickets for events, where you use that as a ticket and and then you can go to the event. So, so we've seen like those two at the top two like use cases. Okay, so that's events. If I want to join an event or if I've been to an event and then there's something post event that's happening. Yeah. Uh, yeah. If you want to join, I have that to prove. Event, Yeah. Yeah. And what was the other use case? So the number one use case is joining Discord or joining a Telegram, um, like getting right. like, uh, access to a private channel using that uh, NFT or using tokens, anything. Okay, so you see, you, you basically see crypto, NFT, Web3 companies gating private, uh, private servers, which kind of goes into the bigger question oh, why might one want to token gate something is token gating the best mechanism or you know um what is the main benefit of of token gating something the main benefit of token gating something is like filtering and curating it for the people you like oftentimes it is like uh, being in a network of like really high quality people is is something a lot of people value this is sort of why people go to conferences people go to events people go to like you know uh join certain communities online because they know that they're going they're going to get to interact with like really high quality people and otherwise getting in touch with them is so hard and getting right. them to respond or getting in touch with them even regardless is so difficult so token gating and building a community where only certain people can join it builds like this closed room where people can like like-minded people can interact with each other without the noise. So, yeah. Right. Do you think it will move away or, or expand away from just NFTs and web three and, and just catch mainstream kind of adoption? I think like it may or may not catch mainstream adoption. I think web three itself is such a big market where there's a lot of communities there's a single like a single person can have multiple communities a single right. company can have multiple communities so like the the number of like a permutation and and like you know combinations like a single wallet can make and uh you know number of communities can be spin up so quickly even there's like short-term projects or memes that you form a community around a meme and then you just uh, go to the next meme and the next community. So I think that market itself is so huge that like building for them and 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 sort of like that kind of a market is itself is like I think uh, as good as mainstream in my opinion. So I, I feel like it will go mainstream eventually when crypto becomes more abstracted away and invisible. But for now itself, like there's so many use cases and so many interesting people online. And so many communities that we haven't even heard of that are just built around like really simple, stupid concepts. So it's yeah, know, yeah, yeah. No, that's cool and and true. That's fair enough. I mean, it's uh, you do see communities spun up every week or so. That's a yeah. new thing that comes on out in crypto, um, which yeah. is nice to see. What are some of the um, like technical aspects of Coinvice under the hood? Like, how do you guys do some of the things you do? Yeah, we have like uh, contracts, smart contracts at the base of it that allows us to deploy these like claim pages or rewards. Um, and obviously we have other intricate uh, details built into the contract itself, like fees and things like that. Um, but essentially it's a way for 
you know, any uh, like creator of the campaign to fully own the contract without a third party, including CoinWise. So we deploy a fresh new contract for every campaign that is fully owned by the creator. Um, so that's like a really important piece. And again, uh, we have like, we're fully composable. So we're integrated with 25 plus platforms and protocols and we're live on 10 plus chains and uh, networks. So I think those things make us really interoperable to be used by any ecosystem. And uh, that's sort of like everything baked together into this platform under the hood. And we obviously spent like about over a year just perfecting the UX for the end user. Right. So when the end user goes to our website to claim a reward, we make sure that they have the best experience possible and the smoothest experience possible. And we spend so much time on it. So that's like the overall like technical, like, you know, or at least like the intention behind CoinWise and be able to achieve that. And we're continuously like improving that day by day. Right. So if I got that right, you have a smart contract that gets deployed when any campaign gets created. And I'm yeah. guessing interacting with the UX kind of tells the smart contract the features that it should have and the way it should act. Yeah, exactly. And that's all solidity, right? It's, it's Solidity, and on the front end, we use TypeScript and Next.js. Oh, nice. Next.js. Interesting choice. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Keeping up yeah. with the times. Yep. Nice. We have a Vue. We have a Vue app. Um, oh, yeah. So we use Vue. I've also used the Svelte for, uh, for a couple of projects. Um, okay. I haven't used Next yet, but I am planning to pick it up at some point and kind of have a play around with it and see what it's like. That's awesome. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I think uh, Next.js and TypeScript are not now used as industry standards everywhere, and even Vue. So um, they have pretty good community, developer documentation, really easy to use. Yeah, yeah, no, 100%, 100%. I feel like Svelte makes their reactive syntax incredibly easy. Like you don't even yeah. have to, you don't have to specify that this is a reactive variable or anything. You just define it with let's, and that's it. And it's a reactive variable. That's pretty neat. Yeah. Um, and Svelte Kit is not bad either. It's good. It's a good tool, uh, and you can just deploy as like simply deploy SSR applications and stuff. Um, yeah. I could I could talk about this all day. <laughs> I, <laughs> I've I've been into front end frameworks for a while, and uh, they're oh, they're wow. all pretty exciting. They're all pretty cool. Yeah, that's awesome. I mean, uh, I've spent some time in front end, not as much, but I'm starting to uh, spend more time in. Uh, right now, I'm using Tailwind uh, Tailwind CSS for my website and TS TypeScript. Um, and I'm starting to explore some backend frameworks as well. Nice, nice. I started with, uh, well, I, I mean, I started about with HTML and CSS, the very basics in like pre-high school. Um, okay. And then I went into JavaScript for a little while and then I picked up Python. And then after Python, I went into like back into JavaScript and then TypeScript and then front-end frameworks and then um, C Sharp and .NET. So that's kind of the uh, the, the awesome. last the latest back backend framework that I kind of played around with, and it's it's strongly typed. And coming from like Python, and then moving into something as strongly typed as C sharp, and mm -hmm. then trying to go back to Python, you're like, I don't understand <laughs> how any of this works anymore. Yeah. How does it just not crash all the time? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so you said you're compatible with about 10 networks or 10 chains. They're all EVM chains. Is that They're right? They're all EVM chains, yeah. Ethereum, Polygon, Optimism, Arbitrum, uh, Linnea, Base, uh, Scroll, and we're going to support Polygon, ZK, VM soon, um, and a few more. Yeah. Nice. Do you have any plans to go beyond EVM at this stage? We're planning to, yeah. We're, we're slowly planning to expand to yeah Solana and a bunch of other ecosystems. Okay, so Solana is number one on your on your list at the moment. Solana Solana is definitely number one. Before that, we have a few more. So I'm interested in Mode Mode Network and Vero Chain. Um, okay. They're both pretty interesting right now, and Mantle too. Um, okay. But but yeah, definitely Solana. I want to explore that because uh, for a tool like us, yeah, Solana is underexplored. Yeah, I mean, Solana has an incredible NFT ecosystem and community, right? I feel like it's just yeah. the right kind of place for you guys to to be in, for sure. Um, what about stuff like, because there, there's two others that kind of come to mind as potentially good, uh, good chains that could benefit from a tool like that. One is uh, Cosmos, because Cosmos has like an ecosystem Absolutely. of chains 
if you integrate with Cosmos, suddenly you've opened up to like a hundred other chains that are compatible. That. Yeah, absolutely agree with that. That's that's on the roadmap, and um, yeah, I agree with you that Cosmos has. I've been following Cosmos for a really long time, so uh, now a lot of apps are using Cosmos as their layer, and uh, I've started to see like more interest now than it was before. So uh, I'm definitely interested. Yeah, I, I've actually had a chat with uh, the product lead that built uh, that's uh, building the IBC protocol, the Inter Blockchain Communication Protocol, which is basically the the backbone of how Cosmos and all of the other uh, networks that use the Cosmos SDK operate. And it's really is really really interesting how how it communicates. It's not like a bridge. Um, yeah. You're basically creating a clone of this chain on like a very light version of, of this chain on this other chain. And then they're both aware of each other's state at any given moment. And yeah. that just adds to the security because you can't just transact something unless you get a proof from the other chain that it happened. So it takes away from this ex bridge exploit that we've been having for the past two years. So yeah. definitely something good to kind of consider Cosmos for that. Um, the other chain that I wanted to ask you about was Tezos. Because that has like a the kind of thriving art market type of community around it. Yeah, Tezos does have an art market. I haven't fully explored Tezos. I've heard that Tezos is pretty active in like developing countries, Philippines and a, a bunch of countries, but I haven't fully looked into it yet. Um, but I have heard like a lot of artists are on Tezos. Have you, have you used it? Um, I've used it a little bit. I've actually been to a couple of um, exhibitions here in in London um, that were made in partnership with Tezos. Uh, okay. They've worked with the Serpentine, which is like a pretty large contemporary art like public gallery okay. um, in London. And I think they they may have worked with another one. And they're definitely working with a few uh, generative art projects like FX Hash. Uh, they have like a generative engine on Tezos. Uh, so uh, I think the like the Tezos NFT art market scene in London seems to be quite um, quite quite busy, and you know, there's always seem to be like new things happening in in Tezos in in and around London, which is pretty cool to see. Wow, that's awesome. Um, yeah, I definitely need to look look into it uh, more because um, yeah, Tezos I've heard it like I've heard it like on and off, but now like. Um, maybe, maybe there's more activity. I would love to check it out. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, for sure. It's a, it's a good like it's a good community because it's very specialized. It's not yeah. it's not as generic as other chains. It's like hey, this is like art market chain, like art world chain, which is which is pretty cool. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure if other I'm, I'm I think other galleries or other bigger projects have started integrating with uh, Tezos as well. Uh, I'm not sure if uh, if Christie's. I'm not sure what Christie's have done, but they definitely have integrated with like a pretty big, um, um, yeah, chain out there. I'll need to check. I don't want to say anything that's that's not accurate. Um, so going back to your campaigns and the kind of campaigns that you've built in the past, what are some of the apart from CoinDesk? What are some of the biggest campaigns or like biggest kind of projects that you worked on? And what are some like cool success success stories that you've had? Yeah, um, we are. We've worked with campaigns with uh, Linnea. So Linnea uh, is again an ecosystem, a, a network where we partner with five projects. We partner with Squid Router, Vertex Protocol. Um, uh, there's this uh, marketing uh, community called Alpha Insiders. We worked with okay. uh, a bunch of like Coin Stats, uh, Orbiter Finance. Um, yeah, five or six platforms on Linnea and launched uh, the Alpha Insider Summer Campaign with Linnea. And we had 5,000 people come in. After that, we launched our biggest partnership with Polygon Labs. So we partnered with 10 to 15 projects there, including XMTP, uh, Crowley, Lens Protocol, or a bunch of like leading projects on Polygon. And that also invited about four to 5,000 people onto these projects. So that was pretty cool. Um, then we launched campaigns with Base and Arbitrum. They both, like, uh, I think in total had about close to 3,000 people come in. And we partnered with, again, leading projects on these ecosystems like Vertex, Showtime. Uh, we had Lore XYZ, uh, a, a bunch of them, DLN Trade. Um, and uh, now we're working with The Block, which is, again, a news company, again, alongside Coindesk. Uh, so we're launching their campaign like in the coming weeks. And we're also working with uh 
yeah, a bunch of ecosystems like that uh, next that we're about to announce and working to get those campaigns live. But yeah, starting this year strong, we uh, saw a bunch of creators launch their campaigns too, and that went viral too. So we're seeing a lot more creators use CoinWise. Uh, so that's also interesting. But yeah, our next few campaigns are going to be with uh, these like brands and we're like also launching our version six. So uh, that's oh, nice. something like exciting too. So a lot of things happening. No, congratulations. I actually saw your tweet about the uh, the Polygon partnership, which is pretty big news. That's fantastic. So congratulations yeah. on that. Thank you. Yeah, cool. it was it was awesome. I mean, we've been trying to get this through like for a long time and they finally like went ahead with it and <laughs> it, uh, it was great. Yeah. That's wicked. Uh, yeah. So you've said that you also seen a lot more creators coming to uh, on board and use, use CoinVice for their own reasons. Um, do you think you're more targeted towards like uh, B2B or, or like B2C kind of consume kind of user? We're more targeted towards like brands in general. So a brand could be a platform, a brand could be an individual creator, or a brand could be a community, or it could even be an ecosystem. So right. we're our like B, so our approach is B two B, but we treat like business as platforms, as creators, right. as communities, as DAOs, or as uh, ecosystems, because they're all at the end of the day they're all brands, and right. our tool can be used by all of them. So uh, that's who our customers and then users come in from their uh, uh, community and then they participate in all of these live campaigns. So that's sort of how that it makes works. Sense. Yeah, we have like about 200K plus users now that participate in these campaigns. That's cool. Do you do any campaign moderation? Are there any guidelines or terms of services that so brands we, are aware of? We show like featured campaigns, uh, which is like curated campaigns that we know are trusted. But yeah, anybody can launch. It's pretty open. Uh, anybody can sign up and get started. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Um, what are your thoughts on like the NFT market in the future and the NFTs as a technology itself? Do you think we're going to see more use cases? I think we're going to definitely see more use cases for, you know, uh, like, uh, yeah, like badges, like reasons, because they're used in a really good way for loyalty. And they're really good use cases for like, you know, utilizing and token gating or like availing discounts or availing different kinds of perks and benefits. So I think NFTs itself are like the status thing sometimes, or they're like, right. loyal, they're like signaling loyalty, or they're you usually like have the utility of like unlocking some perks or discounts. And, and sometimes the NFT itself is, is something, you know, like uh, you use as reputation, uh, like credential. So these are like the broad use cases. I think all of them are like starting out, but status itself is the biggest one, like bragging rights on online uh, itself is like owning something digital that you can brag about uh, and having status. I think that itself is a huge category. And then you can see categories that are utility oriented. So the utility can be membership, the utility can be services, benefits, discounts. Um, and the third one is reputation and credentials. So these are the three top use cases that are, like, uh, are used today. And I'm guessing, because of course you've said you have bragging rights, which is, uh, you know, reputation. You have collectibles, just collecting stuff that's unique. Um, and then you have the um, the other one, which I feel it's exactly what you guys are are hoping, well, not are hoping, are, are helping um, the build. But it's underused right now, which is the um, the side that deals with prom with promotions or with token gating or with interacting with parts of an application based on the thing that you own. Um, I think obviously that's a big thing right now in in the NFT um, community but I feel like it could be more than just NFTs. I feel like brands could start doing these kind of things. I'm sure some have, um, but like Nike could technically, you know, launch a campaign that has to do that token gate something. Like you got to get this pair of sneakers, which is associated with an NFT. And then if you get this, then you can come to our like NFT after party or something like that. Yeah, they could. I mean, I think that's, that's sort of like, uh, interesting, like creative ways of using NFTs, and uh, we're gonna see a lot more of that, like this year for sure. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that because it's it's you know it seems to be really exciting and really kicking up um, speed. So that's that's fantastic to see. Yeah. Um, another thing that I read about recently, 
and I think it's a really cool mix of of like using NFT technologies. The ERC four hundred four standard. Are um, are you familiar with this? ERC four hundred four standard. I yeah, I'm. I've like heard about it. Uh, I haven't looked too deeply into it, but I've seen like a lot of people adding support for ERC four hundred four. So uh, definitely, yeah. I, I would love to, for you to like tell me like. Uh, what, what it's about. Yeah, well, I just, I've just done a bit of reading, so I'm not by no means an expert into the uh, matter or anything, but okay. it, it feels like, well, it seems like they're combining the, um, the, the non-fungibility of a 721 with the fungibility of an ERC-20. Um, so what you basically create is, um, is, is a fractional ownership of an NFT. It's a token that is both non-fungible and fungible at the same time. So let's say that you, you create your own NFT, you create like the, the, I don't know, like a Coinvise collectible. That's a one of one. And then um, that has a certain price point that people just decide to have a fractional ownership of it. That's where this standard comes into play because you will have the one of one, but you'll also have other tokens which are fractions of this one of one. Right. So it enables you to own a fraction of that NFT, or if you own all of the tokens associated to that unique NFT, then you can burn the tokens to get the whole NFT yourself. Wow. Isn't that like, there There, there used to be a platform that did this, um, uh, I, I forgot what it was called. Uh, Maybe it was uh, it was like to do with like fractionalized NFTs, but but yeah, this makes a yeah. lot of sense. Yeah, they definitely there definitely was a platform. I don't remember the name. Um, I do remember that they did something like that, but I don't yeah. think it was fully on chain. I think it was um, they they managed it themselves. It was like a self managed system of how they would do this. But this is basically on chain and and standardized across Ethereum and EVM. And okay. if it gets momentum, then this is going to be like a pretty big thing in, in yeah. fractionalizing. Because it's not just about NFTs. You could fractionalize anything. Yeah. Yeah. You could fra- yeah, you could, you could fractionalize contract ownership. You could you could do a whole a whole lot of things that that um yeah that you can't yeah. do right now. It's pretty yeah. interesting. I'm yeah. just waiting to see exactly how it's gonna be implemented. I think there's a few right now, from what I've seen, there are a few um meme like tokens or collectibles that are using this technology um but i think this is just the start i think like going forward is going to see a lot more adoption into cool new things that we haven't even considered right now yeah what's the coolest thing like you're looking forward to like anything interesting you've seen so far uh what with regards to this standard yeah um it was uh it was a project called I don't remember the main. Let me see if I can look it up quickly. It's something called with something frog, something with frogs, <laughs> ERC four hundred four frogs. I'll um yeah I'll need to I need to look it up and I'll send you the link afterwards because I can't find it right now. Um, but there's there's a cool there's a few cool like use cases or like potential use cases. They're showing what what it could be used going forward. Um, okay. It's still super early, so it doesn't have super widespread adoption. It's just like in a handful of projects that have it right now. Um, but okay. it's definitely something to keep an eye on for the future, for sure. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, so what are your guys' plans for 2024? And do you have anything specific that you'd like to announce or any any cool things that you like to let people know? Yeah, definitely. This quarter is the biggest announcement is protocol rewards for us. Uh, we 6 um, a bunch of integrations with Farcaster. I think that's going to be Q1. Um, uh, the second and the third quarter, we're working on uh, building some uh, some of the adjacent tooling. So we're going to work on a few other tools that we're going to add uh, to our platform. Uh, we're going to uh, work on like building uh, like a system where you know you can um, use it at a discounted fees, uh, like simple tools uh, where. If you participate on CoinWise, you can like use some of the JSON tooling. Uh, so that's something we're looking to build in Q2 and Q3. Uh, okay. We're also like planning to expand to like other ecosystems, like I said, Solana and, and a bunch of others is on the roadmap. And so I think that will take Q2. Um, longer term, like we do have like another like uh, a bigger tool that we're working on. So the goal is to start working on that and and have like. A MVP build out. 
that sounds exciting, man. Um, yeah. Thanks a lot for for the conversation. I think there's a, there's a whole of there's a lot of great features and a lot of potential in in Coinvice, and I'll be keeping up with your guys' updates. Uh, and I'll follow along. If you have a Discord, I might just uh, you know just just slide in and lurk there for a while and see what's uh, what's going yeah, on. Yeah, you totally do. I can send you the link. So. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. If, if you have a like a, a socials that you want to shout, just feel free to, to let people know what are your main socials and when they, where they can follow you in the project. Yeah, so uh, I am Zero Extra General on uh, Zero X, my first name, on Twitter, and Coinwise CEO uh, on Twitter as well. And you can go to coinwise.co to find uh, how to join our community and rest of our socials, what we do. Uh, yeah. Awesome, man. Um, well, thanks a lot again. This has been a lot of fun and uh, let's do it again sometime. 100%. <laughs> awesome. Cool, dude. Have a good one. See you, everyone. See ya.